Good morning and welcome back to day three of Real Estate Live UK's October 2021 programme. Our weeks of free to attend virtual events run three times a year in February, June and October. The programme is brought to you by White Label, our partners and sponsors, and we'd like to take the opportunity to thank all the organisations that have contributed to the exceptional lineup taking place this week. During the sessions this week, places across the UK are showcasing investment opportunities and industry leading experts from the public and private sectors will be discussing new ideas and topical issues relating to property. You can view the full programme of sessions taking place on our website. That link is www.realestatelive.co.uk. Several of our panels and presentations are linked to our key themes for the week, culture and community, sustainable places and wellness. Right now, we have a session in partnership with Invest Chichester, introducing you to the district. But just before we start, I'd like to remind you, the audience, to please feel free to ask questions using Zoom's Q&A function. And now I'm pleased to hand over to our chair for this session, Councillor Tony Dignam, Cabinet Member for Growth, Place and Regeneration at Chichester District Council. Over to you, Tony. Thank you, Callum. Uh, Good morning, everyone, and a warm welcome to this session to introduce you to Invest Chichester. Invest Chichester is the inward investment arm of Chichester District Council, promoting the district as a suitable place for businesses to locate, grow and thrive. I'm Tony Dignam, the Cabinet Member for Growth, Place and Regeneration at Chichester District Council. I've lived in Chichester for 21 years. Uh, Previously in my business career, I was a Senior Director at Leading Retail Businesses, Dixon's Group, H. Samuel and Selfridges. Joining me today, are Jane Hotchkiss, Director of Growth and Place at Chichester District Council, Danielle Dunfield, Chief Executive of the Great Sussex Way, the destination marketing organization for this area, Neil Ainsworth, IT and Compliance Director at Cove Communities, a company which has a huge investment in the area in the form of caravan parks and their associated facilities. James Belvin, Development Surveyor at Hanbury Properties, a major local property developer and Kevin Gillett, Valuation and Estates Manager at Chichester District Council. Chichester is one of the most charming cities on the South Coast, combining all the attractions of a historic city with both the nearby rural delights of the South Downs and an outstanding coast. The district is rich in leisure, culture and heritage facilities, which combined with the open space from the Downs to the Dunes offers an unrivaled quality of life. Well-connected, prosperous and progressive, Chichester is a district embracing growth. It welcomes entrepreneurial and creative businesses. Businesses will find Chichester District as everything they need to thrive. Chichester District boasts impressive connectivity for business. Central London is around an hour and a half away by train, and there are two international airports within 60 minutes, Gatwick and Southampton, while Heathrow is just 90 minutes away. For imports and exports, Portsmouth and Southampton two of Britain's largest port cities, are 20 and 45 minutes away, respectively. The district is also home to major, well-established employers, including Goodwood, Nature's Way Foods, and Rolls-Royce Motors. Major investors and developers include Hanbury Properties and Cove Communities, who will address you later on in the session. Our towns have proved to be very resilient over the COVID period. Independent businesses have worked really well to support the community with essential goods and services. Post-COVID-19, quality of life and well-being have been at the heart of many business and investment decisions. Chichester is perfectly positioned to support the nation's increased focus on both mental and physical health. Let's look at one example of local dynamic business centres, the automotive industry. Chichester's long-running association with the automotive industry provides a sound basis for future growth. Opportunities are readily available, including the chance to hire local talent trained by excellent tertiary education providers within the district, Chichester College and the University of Chichester. They both play key roles in training tomorrow's experts. Chichester College trains hundreds of students every year across various automotive trades, both for motorcycles and motor motor vehicles. Some of the UK's most iconic cars have been and continue to be developed, tested and manufactured in our district at Rolls-Royce Motors. The opportunity is here for anyone in the sector to become a part of our motoring story with our help to put you in the fast lane. The strength of Chichester food and drinks uh, sector is also a springboard for future economic growth. And I should tell you that on January the 26th, 
We will be having a food and uh, drinks event at, Ch at Chichester College to which producers are invited. A third sector with clear growth opportunities in the district is the industrial and log logistics sector. Kevin Gillett will give more details later of our major investment in the sector. There's our next major, our current, sorry, major investment in the se sector, the St. James's Estate in East Chichester. James Belbin will speak more generally of this sector's opportunities. Finally, with its manifold attractions to visitors, there's ample scope for expansion of the hospitality sector and other beneficiaries from tourism. The Great Sussex Way is our vehicle for promoting the district as a destination. And Daniel Dunfield and Neil Ainsworth will address different aspects of this vital sector. I will now ask Jane Hotchkiss, the District Council's Director of Growth and Price, to address us. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you for the introduction. And good morning to all on the call um, presentation this morning. Um, I've just a few minutes to let you know what the Council can offer to businesses coming to the district and how we can work with businesses to support them. The aim of the session is to sort of showcase the district and what it has to offer in terms of well-being, life-work balance and support for businesses and some of our current growth projects um, that we want you to make, to make you aware of. Um, again, as Tony has said, late, later on the call, you'll hear directly from a couple of businesses that are operating with the district and why this location has been so valuable to their businesses. You will also hear about what the council is doing to support business growth um, and to, an example of this is the current regeneration project at St. James Industrial Estate. The council currently supports businesses through our business contact programme, helping new and existing businesses grow and develop by signposting to other agencies, linking with supply chains and advising on available grants. Our current enabling grants is currently live and it has supported a large number of businesses just to have that little extra start or push or incentive to do more and is currently um, advertised on our website. Um, the closing date is the 13th of October, and all the details of what we can do to help support is on the website. We've also been supporting the High Street through our specialist retail training and shopfront grants, and we currently operate a pop-up scheme. This has been very valuable in allowing our local innovative growth small businesses to grow and experiment on the High Street. Currently, our high, our high streets are performing better than most across the country with our voids well below the national levels. The economic development team has a number of officers giving business support and has strong links with, up, with all the other council departments. With those links, they can help businesses access the services they need to support them to grow. For example, they can help them to register through a food business or give advice on planning matters, and even provide support through the planning process at the council. The service is also working closely with our planning policy team, developing the evidence base for, for the local plan refresh and gathering evidence around the, the need for growth within the district. We have invested recently over £18 million of capital into the local economy. In 2018, we built and opened the Enterprise Centre, which is operated by Basepoint on behalf of the Council. The centre offers easy in, easy out rental and the occupancy is running at its highest levels since opening, currently around 96% occupancy. A number of businesses have relocated from, from London and actually the facility actually has ultra fast high fibre um, and has high, the highest connectivity speeds in the local area. One of our local businesses, Patterson Dental, first established as one of the first occupiers of the Enterprise Centre, and they have now grown out of that accommodation and have moved to one of our new light industrial units at Ravenna Point, which was built a few years later. With support from the economic development team and the estate service to assist the, their relocation and moves. And further details around um, Patterson Dental are, are available as a case study on our Invest Chichester website. Our further investment is the one that Kevin will be speaking about later at the St. James Industrial Estate. The council is also currently looking to regenerate the southern area of the city, creating space for health facilities, leisure and tourism, and new homes. As part of this, we're working with Stagecoach to relocate the bus depot and bus station 
and have purchased a relocation site in Chichester at the end of one of our industrial areas at Terminus Road. We're also working with the Sussex Community Health Hub and the NHS CCG, the Coastal Commissioning Group, to bring forward a proposal for a new community health hub at the old school site in Kingsham. However, building and regeneration isn't all we're doing to ensure a thriving local, local economy. We've recently published an events strategy which sets out our commitments to working with local businesses, promoting the local supply chains, creating tourism opportunity and increasing footfall to our retail areas. Not only do we support the large Goodwood events through our safety advisory groups and partnerships and advice through licensing activities, but we're also directly creating events ourselves. For example, within the high street, we recently had our summer street party, which helped to boost footfall in the high street by 88% from the previous comparable days. And next year, we have a massive opportunity to celebrate our cultural facilities as they celebrate their birthdays with a season of culture, working in partnership with our nationally recognised Festival Theatre and Pallant House Gallery, as well as our local district museum services. As part of our economic recovery plans post-COVID, we are supporting tourism by core funding the Great Sussex Way and believe that the Vista economy should be working hand in glove with direct investment. And, Dan and Danielle will go into further detail regarding the work of the Great Sussex Way. As Councillor Dignam mentioned, Invest Chichester is the inward investment service of the District Council. We have reviewed our resources and given more support to promoting the district as the place to locate, grow and thrive. Please do look at our website and please follow us on our LinkedIn page at Invest Chichester. Thank you, Chairman. Turn your mute. I'm not. So shall I start? I think I'm the next speaker. Please, Danielle. Um, OK, so <laughs> hello, my name is Danielle Dunfield and I'm the CEO of the Great Sussex Way. Councillor Dignam already explained that the Great Sussex Way is a tourism organisation that supports and coordinates the many businesses that make up the tourist economy in Chichester District. Some quick figures and facts. The tourism economy makes up 14% of the local economy. Uh, we welcome over 6 million visitors a year, uh, and the average visitor spend per year in a normal year, not a COVID year, would be 411 million. So what are our strengths and our areas of growth? That's what I'm here to talk about. Um, our strengths is that we have an enormously varied offering um, distributed across a stunning rural landscape. I represent and support businesses that range from Goodwood, which has already been mentioned. Goodwood's known for motor racing, flying, revival events with an international draw. Uh, but I also represent the one man coffee van at Kingley Vale, Kingley Vale being one of National England's ancient forests. Um, now, this strength is also a challenge because when it comes to defining who we are, some people are left wondering because of this great richness of variety. Um, and in fact, to underscore that point, a recent audit of our website comparing us to visit Cornwall, visit Kent and visit the Isle of Wight showed that we had about 900,000 additional Google search terms that direct potential visitors to our area, which underscores you know, how, how much and what a variety of things goes on here. So what are our growth areas from a visitor economy perspective? Growth areas... Um, being defined in this case by an overlap of what we're doing and what consumer demand is driving. Uh, so first of all, the countryside, communing with nature. That, that's what people particularly post-COVID want to do, but it's also the millennials want being a lot more interested in green tourism, spending more, greater premium for, um, for events that are sustainable. We have and we have everything in that in our in the tourism remit. So we have extreme sports, wind surfing, wind foiling, mountain biking, gravel riding, um, but we also have meditative pursuits. We have forest bathing. We have a wonderful cathedral, the Buddhist monastery, um, and we're yes, increasingly working on our green offering. Um, I also want to talk about vineyards. 
Chichester is increasingly the sparkling wine capital of Great Britain, um, which in the past may perhaps raised a bit of a giggle, um, but actually now serious reality. So Nightimber, who's just outside our district, um, is beating France in blind tastings. And our local vineyard, Ashling Park, has for the second year in a row won the President's Trophy for the best classic cuvee. So we have a really competitive offering in the wine area. Um, and that this, you know, it's not surprising that the French are buying up our farmland and planting grapes. Uh, I'm just going to mention cycling uh, briefly. So cycling sales were up 63% year on year before COVID. It was a, a, a huge grossing asset during lockdown. Um, and Deloitte's forecast that with technological innovations like e-bikes, it will further spur cycling growth around the world. And the study predicts that the number of bike commuters in many cities around the world will double in the next year or two. And I should also, I can't, you know, uh, leave out a very important bedrock of our uh, offering, which is Chichester Festival Theatre, which is undeniably the gateway to the West End. So to conclude, why should businesses set up here? We can both boast many growth areas. And we can also attract the best workforce by offering tremendous work-life balance, which I think is best represented um, by some fantastic flexible working spaces in Chichester city centre, as well as around the district. And this work-life balance for me is best reflected by surf and work in the Witterings, where serious creatives are serving, serving the biggest global brands. The office overlooks the beach and even has a communal surfboard rack in the corridor so you can catch some waves in your coffee break. So with that image, I end. Thank you very much, Danielle. I now ask uh, Neil Ainsworth uh, to speak for Cove Communities, please. Would you ask Tony, and thank you, Danielle. Um, Co Communities, uh, for those of you who aren't aware, um, purchased Bun Leisure from the John Bun family back at the end of 2019 um, and basically looked at the operation. It's It's been in place since 1959, so uh, it's, it's had its 60 year anniversary and it's built up to a certain level by the Bun family, uh, of which I worked for uh, for about four years before Cove's, uh, Cove's acquisition. Um, for those of you who don't know, we've got approximately two and a half thousand units of accommodation. Uh, we've got retail uh, activity facilities. And uh, one of the main benefits uh, for us was it's quite, got, a, got a quite a large head office building, uh, which is an ideal base for growth in the area and also the UK as a whole. Um, the, the big desire for us was that it had lots of space and the infrastructure to develop uh, Bun Leisure. And uh, which obviously required a large capital investment that unfortunately John um, didn't necessarily have access to, and uh, the speed that it was required was uh, was going to be a struggle for him. Um, Bone Leisure itself benefits from all the local services, uh, the road infrastructure, easy connections, as I already mentioned, to London and the airports, uh, and major road road networks for all our holiday guests, um, our owners, and uh, obviously team alike. With regard to um, um, it's already been mentioned about the wine. Uh, we, we do have a warm climate here on the south coast uh, and that definitely benefits, benefits everyone who comes on our on their vacations and holidays. Um, we have got quite receptive planning officers and local parish and district councils that are open and supportive to our development of, uh, of tourism as a major income driver to the local economy. Uh, we, we are quite a large employer of local residents um, and whilst predominantly a more seasonal business, we do directly employ over a thousand people each year uh, and many of those are now in permanent positions um, and look to go even further. Um, there was a report actually when I joined uh, joined Bun Leisure back in uh, in 2016 that was commissioned um, and it identified that Bun Leisure supports a local economy to the tune of about £50 million pounds per annum um, and we see this has risen steeply over the last five years and it's also earmarked to increase even further during co-communities ownership. Um, following the own, uh, following the purchase back in 2019, and and as many of you know, we we entered into uh, a slightly different world in March of 2020. Uh, we continued to invest um, quite heavily into our new retail outlets, sports and activity areas, indoor and mainly outdoor water play facilities, including a wave rider. So I think Danielle and her surfboards can come down and use that. Um, and it was probably about 18 million pounds in in year one. Um, we've got further plans to invest um, and it includes quite a significant investment obviously in the outdoor activities which are becoming more more uh, needed especially during the current climate. 
Our long-term um, goals are our investment strategy is, is very much not based on a venture capitalist fund. Uh, we are backed by sovereign wealth funds and pension funds. Um, and our planned ownership, uh, as far as COVID communities, is, is in the rate region of 25 to 30 years, as opposed to someone who comes in, uh, takes as much money as they can and walk away. Uh, it's definitely here for the, for the long term. In terms of further investment uh, in the UK, we, we actually uh, use Selsey and our head office here as a base. Uh, we've already purchased parks and resorts in Essex, uh, also in Cornwall. Um, and we've also got some future acquisitions planned uh, at the end of this year, which will be more northern based, but ultimately centrally, centrally controlled by our head office down here in the in, in Selsey and uh, in the Chichester district. We um, we recently acquired uh, another park in, in the district called Medway Park, which is near Braxton Bay, um, which from from Bunledge you can actually see, but unfortunately you have to go 15 miles inland and go around some fields to get to. But um, it's got some beautiful aspects over there. It's a 308 unit resort. Um, and we we obviously identify that it's been underfunded and underinvested for a number of years. Um, we see some quite major investment in the coming years to make it the premier holiday village in the UK. And couple that with Bun Leisure, uh, will offer two types of holiday, vacation and ownership. Um, and obviously this requires the support of the local government to realise our plans, which, as I've mentioned already, um, they are very supportive of tourism. Um, hopefully this action speaks loudly and about our commitment to invest locally and support the growth of Chichester and the surrounding towns and villages in the years to come. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Neil. Uh, I'll now ask uh, James Belbin to speak for Hanbury Properties, please. James, over to you. Thank you, Councillor Dingham. Um, good morning, all, and um, thank you, White Label, for organising this event. Um, Hanbury Properties are a local Chichester-based business. We, um, we specialise in promoting residential and commercial development and our key, key areas of expertise are promoting land through the planning process, delivering complex infrastructure to unlock difficult sites, working principally with highways authorities and statutory providers. Um, utility providers and also doing commercial development both on a speculative and pre-let basis. Um, one of the questions I was asked to respond to is why did we decide to invest in Chichester? Um, Hanbury are a opportunity and relationship led business so um, whilst we're not wedded to the location of Chichester you know being a local business and property is all about knowing your markets we have a strong um, commitment to the area and work alongside a lot of landowners, occupiers and investors within this area. Um, I think the underlying dynamics, i.e. it's a great location, Chichester it has excellent transport links. Um, we're fortunate enough, and I think a lot of the previous speakers have alluded to this, where you know, we, we've got the South Downs to the north, um, we've got the proximity to the sea, We've got strong cultural history with arts and music festivals throughout the year. We've got Chichester Festival Theatre, Pallant House Art Gallery. Um, we've got the surrounding areas of Petworth and Midhurst, brilliant schools and universities, Goodwood as well. It just makes the whole area a very attractive place to work and live. It's also a very densely populated area around this area, not only Chichester itself, but you know, you've got, I think in Hampshire, there's about one and a half million people within a um, 45 minute drive of the area in the areas of Southampton and Portsmouth. And you've got the, the ports, which is you know, big for import and exports, the airports of Southampton, um, again, and Shoreham to a lesser extent. And, yeah, and then obviously the A27 trunk road, which connects um, the east and the west of the south coast. So, yeah, it's, it's a brilliant place and strong, high-skilled economy, big automotive industry, big horticultural industry. Um, the tourist sector is, is very big, as previous speakers have alluded to, and an educated workforce, high home ownership compared to the national average, low unemployment. Um, and, yeah, it's, we're very fortunate to live in this area. Um, yeah, it's yeah, and what also is 
the strengths of the local area with the downs and the sea also underpins the property market itself in that you have the natural barriers of the downs and the sea, which means that you know, there's only so much land that can be developed, which, and as everyone will know, property is all about supply and demand. In terms of the sectors that perform well, um, you know, from, from our perspective, we've we've got a 12-acre site um, on Bognor Road roundabout on the A27, A259, where we've just got outline permission for a mixture of commercial uses. Um, and you know, we we see the leisure sector as being a strong growth sector. Um, you know, Chichester has an undersupply of hotel space and there's very strong demand from hotel occupiers and um, there's a strong strong tourist sector as, sector as we've spoken about and in March through to September you know the sailing season and the Goodwood events means there's a huge demand for hotel space we also feel that you know drive through food and drink establishments are very in demand at the moment people want fast and convenient food so we see this as a very strong sector and you know where Chichester is positioned you know adjacent to the A27 means that you know it's, it's somewhere that you know, we see a huge area of growth in terms of industrial warehouse and logistics sector and this continues to be strong and it's not just specific to Chichester it's nationwide particularly with the growth in online retail um, you know, it's 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 a very in vogue sector. I think you know, there there is historically been a low supply of good quality warehouse accommodation in Chichester, um, particularly sort of large format units. So you know, this is somewhere that we're very focused on, and not only occupier demand remains high, but also there's a strong appetite from investors. Retail sector, town centre retail, yeah, you know, it does have its challenges. Um, you know, but Chichester has been very resilient given the current context. I think you know, an area that continues to be strong is you know, the discount retail sector and the likes of Little Aldi, Home Bargains. They, they have strong appetite in the area and with changing consumer habits, I think that, that area remains strong. And then offices, the office sector does present a challenge, I think. Um, I think a lot of existing occupiers have lease, existing lease commitments, so it's unclear at the moment what the full effects of COVID will be. Um, you know, this means that investor appetite is somewhat hesitant at the moment towards that sector. So I think we're unlikely to see speculative office development coming forward in the short term, but you know, it will present opportunities um, in the medium term. I think you know, just to summarize, I think Chichester is a brilliant place. You know, we're we're very fortunate to be based here. You know, we are very much looking for new opportunities and new investments across the area. We we remain extremely positive. And you know, with our 12-acre site that we're bringing forward um, in the in the new year, you know, we're very, we're very confident that it's going to be a success. And we look forward to working with the district and you know, the local planning authority and also the economic development team have been very supportive today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, James. Uh, I now ask uh, Kevin Gillett if he talk about our current major development at the St. James Industrial Estate on the east side of Chichester. Kevin, over to you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Dignam. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, uh, my name is Kevin Gillett. I'm the Valuation Estates Manager at the District Council. As referenced earlier, I will talk about the District Council's uh, new St. James Industrial Estate Redevelopment Project. Uh, the project is a, an exciting scheme to redevelop a former industrial estate uh, to the east of the city centre. Uh, the former estate dates back to the 1950s when it was used as a council depot, um, but has uh, long since passed its useful economic life. Um, although popular, redevelopment of the site was necessary in order to improve the outdated offering and provide more sustainable accommodation and facilities of a size and quality uh, capable of meeting modern commercial business needs. Chichester District is home to a diverse and interesting range of businesses, and this project will provide modern industrial premises 
uh, and a means uh, that we can bring the whole site back into use and deliver the quality accommodation that we know businesses demand. Uh, the provision of attractive and letterful floor space provides opportunities for new startups and existing companies uh, to expand into the new units. There is a lack of supply within the district of smaller style industrial units, and we know that demand is strong. As James mentioned, the industrial market within the district has actually strengthened during COVID and we, as we continue with the economic uh, recovery. There was also, this was also evidenced by the fact that there were, um, we were able to fill um, one of our other new industrial developments within the last 12 months that had previously been largely uh, vacant. Uh, and it was also quite apparent um, for the need for this sort of accommodation um, as tenants of the former estate struggled to identify and secure alternative premises, uh, although thankfully they all did. Uh, redevelopment of the site to deliver modern fit for purpose industrial accommodation will safeguard existing employment and create new jobs, increasing overall demand uh, in, the, in the economy. And the development incorporating a sustainable approach to delivery will support the government's green recovery ambitions, which form a critical element of their current economic program. Discussions with a pre-let tenant indicate significant employment and economic benefits would flow from their occupation of the site. Uh, and as an existing Chichester-based business looking to grow, the new facilities would enable them to consolidate and expand their current workforce and remain in the district. Uh, and we are sure that demand will remain strong. So what of the new development itself? Uh, it's a sustainable development with uh, Briam standard very good throughout. Uh, this multi-million pound project will provide energy efficient industrial units in a very convenient location on West Hampton Road with good transport links um, to uh, the South Coast. Um, the development will provide high quality industrial um, use class E um, and uh, B8 uh, close to the city centre and the main road and rail networks. Um, it has the benefit of being walking distance to the city centre and is um, situated opposite Barnfield Retail Park and close to the Portville Way uh, Business Park. And the development is due to complete uh, by summer 2022. The project will deliver up to 30 new units, totaling approximately 4,448 square metres of lettable space uh, with, uh, with five total buildings. Uh, that's, that's circa 48,000 square feet in old money. Um, the units will measure from 53 to 230, 213 square metres of space. And with the main block, there will be additional space um, op, um, option by way of internal mezzanine. Uh, block one, which will be known as the central block, um, had did have a previous pre-let agreed, uh, but unfortunately, as a result of COVID, they ended up being able to expand on their existing site. Uh, and as such, we are still um, yet to secure a single occupier. Uh, an anchor tenant for the site, although discussions with a couple of local major businesses are ongoing. Um, the central block will be circa 25,000 square feet, um, but in the event that uh, we are unable to secure a single let, um, it, ha it has been designed and future-proofed in such a way that it can provide 10 single units, um, and these will um, potentially extend to uh, 213 square metres, plus the mezzanine, uh, as already mentioned. Um, the central block as it is will be 25,000 square feet um, before the mezzanine area. Um, features of the entire site include uh, eaves heights of um, in excess of eight metres for block one and in excess of four metres for the other smaller blocks. Um, space for mezzanine, as already discussed, disabled uh, toilet facilities in each unit, three phase electricity supply, um, renewable energy by way of photovoltaic panels, Allocated parking with 28 active electric car charging points, um, a good provision of alternative parking as well, and units will be available on new occupational leases and commercial terms. Each unit has a loan door uh, with uh, suitable external areas for articulated lorry parking and manoeuvring, plus plenty of alternative parking. As part of the development, there will be improved mobility um, uh, outline to outline residential areas, the site and the city centre through cycle and footpath improvements. Uh, with increased overall connectivity due to the forthcoming enhancements in the local digital communication networks um, that are necessary to help drive economy, uh, the ec economic growth. Um, the estates team, as well as the council's economic development team, will be very pleased to speak to all interested businesses um, or any interest at St James. And for more, for more information, please contact us through the Investors website. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, we now go to questions, and uh, uh, Callum has had uh, is is going to organise the Q and A uh, session for us. And so, Callum, over to you now, please. 
Thanks very much, uh, Tony. So we've had a couple of questions come in. And, uh, and the, f- the first one here, I'd like to ask it out to, to the panel. Uh, one from uh, viewer John Butts, who's asked about the Northern Bypass uh, and whether we see the potential of Northern Bypass through uh, the country. So I'd like to benefit of Bypass, Chichester's economy and well-being. Um, I don't know who would like to have a go at this one First, um, I maybe see uh, James. I don't know how what your views are on the uh, the Northern, those Northern bypass. Um, to be honest, I'm not sure I'm best placed to. Um, I, to I think actually, uh, uh, Chairman, I, uh, Callum, I mean, uh, I better answer this one. Yeah. The, okay. Um, the Highways England, as it was, I think it's uh, slightly changed its title, but it's Highways England as was, um, are now doing a study of the various options for the A27, whether it should be a some southern route around, around the south of the city or a northern route. But I would remind the panel and uh, those listening that um, the northern route has been previously rejected because of the cost issues. Uh, also, uh, it's uh, very close to the National Park and would be it would be difficult to get uh, the appropriate planning consent for a northern route. I personally don't think it's on the cards. I think uh, the government's um, priority is really for the Midlands and North infrastructure of England rather than uh, uh, the Southeast. So I think that uh, the outcome, unfortunately, will will be probably a, uh, a standoff. Uh, the highways England won't want to develop something when there's a large amount of opposition to a southern route, not surprisingly, as because it's not only close to the area of outstanding natural beauty around Chichester Harbour, it is also very close to the city with all the noise issues involved. And worst of all, the years and years of construction as each of the roundabouts were mended. So uh, I don't think uh, we can claim that uh, there will be any early solution to the problems of the A27, and we'll have to make the best we can. It still is, as I pointed out, and uh, as also uh, James pointed out, very quick access to near- nearby centres, despite the difficulties of the 27 which of course are paralleled in most other major highways in the country, as anyone who drives around the country will know. What's the next one, James? Uh, Callum? Thanks very much, Tony. Uh, We've had a couple of questions in from uh, Karen Rollins. Uh, First one is for Neil uh, Cove. Uh, The local economy plays an important part uh, in in Chichester. How does Cove interact with local businesses? Um, it's something that we we take quite seriously, and uh, even under John Bunn's um, uh, reign uh, before 2019, uh, we worked well with uh, local economy. We sponsored various things, including the uh, Bunn Ledger Stadium, as was um, for the local Selsey Football Club. We uh, invested quite heavily in the first responders and great and and basically paid for that first response uh, vehicle and uh, and the volunteers. Um, over Cove's ownership over the last couple of years, we've started to um, set some priorities in terms of our local investment and our local supply. So uh, to the stage now that we're we're approaching 20% local supply for our food and beverage outlets. So that includes uh, locally produced ice cream, uh, butchers, um, wine, obviously we've mentioned already, uh, cider. Uh, and and local beer so yeah we, we've got that commitment uh, in all our resorts uh, over the over around the UK that we, we look at trying to support the local economy in terms of not just building supplies not just local contractors but also the supply of food and beverage over the over the coming years so our 20 percent target which I think uh, we're probably slightly higher this year because our our food sales have been quite dramatic uh, during uh, after after covid's uh, conditions started to relent um, and we'll continue that uh, not just at Selsey, but also at Memory Park when that's developed further. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Uh, now, uh, and James, got one here for you from Karen Rollins as well. Um, what, in, in your opinion, makes businesses come to the area? Thank you. I, I think, you know, they, obviously it's sort of sector specific. Um, I mean, my my principal focus at Hanbury is I sort of you know, I get very much involved in you know, commercial development and particularly sort of industrial the industrial sector. I mean, we've we've got there's a lot of development going on around the local area, and I think you know with development you have businesses that thrive off the development. So there's a lot of 
um, small sort of small businesses, uh, traders, tradesmen, um, you know, that, that type of you know, installation providers, you know, all the types of industries you get off development. And you know, they've got a lot of work. Um, you know, they're, they're, a lot of them now are at a stage where they, they want their own premises. They, um, so there's, there's a lot of demand. And, and then equally, on the flip side, you know, there is an undersupply of that type of stock. Um, you know, there's, it's encouraging to see um, what Kevin was mentioning, St. James's Industrial Estate coming forward. I think that would be good for the local area, but I think you know, more, develop, more employment development is required. And you know, that's why we're obviously bringing forward our Chichester Cathedral Business Park scheme um, and you know we're, we're we're very excited about that, and you know we will be doing some smaller format units at that estate as well. Fantastic, James. Thank you very much. I don't know if any other members of the panel would like to uh, to come into that as well. Looking at the USP stuff that she says, Danielle. Yes, over to you. I just wanted to add that we're incredibly fortunate to have both Chichester College and the University of Chichester, who are you know, high calibre organisations, institutions producing and training fantastic students. And certainly in our organisation, we work very closely with those, with those two educational establishments to, one, provide um, work experience for their students, but we end up learning from their students. Uh, and I think that it, you know that mentoring scheme is hugely beneficial to all parties, and the, that really shouldn't be underestimated. I know certainly for us, yes, I know we're here to promote the, the district, but we are also a business, um, and some of our competitors pay tens of thousands of pounds for video footage to promote the area. We use our local college and university, and we are achieving greater reach with our videos than than the other than our competitors. So I think you know that's another reason to come here. Can I just add and endorse the university and college as well? They are very flexible in the courses they're offering. The college, in particular, have developed degree apprenticeship courses recently, and will be also offering T levels, um, which obviously look our local sort of matches to the skills required. Um, they, we also operate in the kickstart scheme um, and apprenticeships as well. So there's all the link in with the schools and the colleges and the university. And the university also has a, a STEM um, business school establishment as well locally. So I would endorse um, the support of the education locally as um, outstanding. Fantastic. Thank you, Jane and, and Danielle. Um, some more questions in in, in Q and A for for the panel here, um, and, and Tony, maybe one that you would like to to, to sort of start with here is as cabinet member, um, how can uh, Chichester's location be used to attract investors and growth? Well, I think we've uh, dealt with a lot of the factors which make the area very attractive. We've talked about the city, the coast, the du uh, the uh, the downs. I mean, the, it is a very attractive working environment, and I think. One thing that COVID has taught us is to uh, get a better work-life balance. We don't want to be sitting on a commuter train for an hour or so each way, each day, and then um, come home and the kids have already gone to bed. And uh, I think that we, we're offering a very pleasant uh, existence where when you do need to go into your London or, or distant office, um, it's still quite a good service, half hourly trains to Victoria. Can I add that we have a, a large, uh, you know, we have a selection of um, co and shared working space on offer within the city. And, and as I mentioned earlier, we're working with City Fibre to bring the ultra fast broadband, which is, has a spine route around the city and into the city. So that is benefiting a lot of our local businesses because they've got that ultra fast connectivity. Fantastic. Thank, thank you. And I'll just open it up to, to the panel as well, just being a point there that, that Tony mentioned about the sort of well-being, quality of life benefits. Uh, do employers need to make more of, of the, the benefits uh, that Chichester offers uh, in order to attract staff in from outside of the district? If anyone would like to have a go at, at, at that one. Uh, Neil, maybe as, a, as an employer here in the district, might fancy a go at answering that one? Yeah, I, I think uh, Cove uh, 
ultimately tries to employ as many people locally. Um, unfortunately, the, the skill set and also competing businesses in, in hospitality down to Bognor, obviously with the Butlins Resorts, other holiday resorts and food and beverage generally. So we do have to um, sometimes buy in resource from exterior. We're quite fortunate that we can offer accommodation and uh, and very good training schemes. We have a training academy that started up last year that uh, that we use for that. And we also allow that to be used by uh, local local residents for meetings and uh, and for training. I think I think personally, you know, that I think it's been mentioned quite a number of times already. The 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 environment that we work in down on the south coast. <clears throat> whether it's the weather, whether it's the environment, whether it's the South Downs, the the local local areas that you can go and visit, it, it is it's a great place to live. I moved down to West Sussex uh, in the uh, early 2010 11, um, and I've never had a day off ill. Um, now, whether that's because I uh, I love yeah I uh, I love the sea air um, and I, and I benefit from down here, um, but I think generally speaking, you know, I, I go into London quite a lot for various meetings. I go all around the country and. Um, you know, I would say it's on par with Cornwall in terms of some of the views, in terms of what's on offer. Um, and I think, like you say, that that happy work-life balance uh, is the most important thing. I think everyone's realised over the last two years nearly now during COVID that, um, you know, people are changing their work work patterns, you know, not having to get into a train, not going sitting in a in a, in a multi-office environment, although there, are, there is still place for those. And I think um, I think Chichester is a great place to work and the, and the surrounding areas both live and work. Fantastic. Thank you very much, uh, Neil. Um, Danielle, I'm not sure you've seen you unmuted there if there's anything you'd like to add on that. I, I was just going to add that I've actually been an expat for most of my um, most of my life, and I often see Chichester described as green and pleasant, which I thought was rather a bland description of a magnificent area. Uh, but there's nothing like COVID to make you realise quite how magnificent, green and pleasant can be. I just wanted to add when we were doing some work with our attractions and our local businesses with regards to the season of culture, we looked at what the image of Chichester is. I think sometimes it's mistaken as seen to be heritage twee, but actually that's not true at all. Yesterday's inventors are today's heritage and we have some incredible local businesses that I've worked with and spoken to on a daily basis through COVID who've been incredibly flexible and creative with regards um, to diversification and to ad- adapting and it's been incredibly heartening and inspiring and I you know I don't think don't underestimate this area uh, because I think it, the one thing it's not good at is um, presenting itself as a very dynamic place that it is. Fantastic. Thank you very much, uh, Dan- Danielle. Uh, Jane, a question in from the, the audience uh, for you around um, what uh, is uh, the Chichester District Council uh, doing in, in terms of engaging with landlords to make opportunities more flexible and attractive? Um, I think that this, obviously the subject is around the high street and the transformation of the high street. Um, Obviously, the COVID pandemic has had a, an accelerating effect on the high street, but the high street was changing in before that took place, you know, started the pandemic. And we've been working um, with the high street, looking at um, offering alternative activities, events, and offering um, retail training for independence and shop front grants. So we realise that it's a transformation that's happening. Um, actually, in Chichester, Directly, obviously, the council doesn't have an influence over those landlords or on rental, but the rentals have adjusted. And actually, we're seeing in Chichester a number of um, businesses opening up within the high street. And obviously, in a couple of years' time, the business rates will be have a revaluation. And again, that will impact who's coming back to the high street. From a council's point of view, we have um, a welcome back fund. Um, so we've been working on doing enhancements to the public realm, um, improving signage. Um, within the city Um, we're also creating a new market as a destination so in Chichester this will be called the Cross and Moor um, market in in relation to the the cross the historic cross in the middle of the city Um, and obviously um, there's this perception of avoids uh, as being high um, but actually when you walk around those units are are being replaced fairly quickly um, we've recently got news that the Ivy is coming to Chichester in a very prominent location within the city. And our voids are around 11%. And actually, the, the national void level is at 145 So there's lots of different initiatives happening with the high streets around um, leisure, entertainment, events, training initiatives, shopfront grants, pop-up shops, 
um, and allowing um, startup businesses to try within the high street. And, and then, as I say, some improvements to the public realm as well, using the Welcome Back Fund. We also work closely with the bid because um, in Chichester, we have a business improvement district and they have a number of initiatives around the additional marketing of the city, um, linking with the Great Sussex Way and also around um, events and improvements um, and Christmas activities. And especially for Christmas, we're supporting with additional car parking incentives and uh, um, through our my permits and buy one hour, buy two hours, get one hour free. And we're offering free parking for all the late night shopping as well in one of our main car parks. So there's lots of incentives around and working with the high street. Um, and obviously we, we liaise with the landlords and we know there's an adjustment going on with those rentals at the moment. I think I'd just like to add that one of the big helps for us has been the government's relaxation of planning restrictions on high streets. Uh, in our current local plan, the one that was formed in 2015, we laid down that the inner streets of Chichester City should have to be 75% retail. Well, of course, if we if we kept to that, we would have had even more voids than uh, Jane was just indicating. But in fact, uh, the government brought in a new Class E, which meant that if you've got a shop in the high street, you can use it as a gym or a whole range of other things without needing uh, uh, planning permission to do so. Uh, so this is uh, flex things up from a government point of view. And of course, as Jane has said, rents are coming down um, 30 to 50 percent. And uh, we are currently in the middle of a national rates revaluation, which if, it's, if it goes by the pattern of previous ones, will be geared more closely to current rents rather than the historic ones that were driven up by the multiples who left the city centres. Uh, so I think it's a very hopeful uh, lookout. And as Jane says, there's lots of new shops coming. One struck by the churn, of course, in the high street. Um, some businesses come, some go, uh, but we end up with a still a lively and interesting shopping centre. Oh, sorry, visiting centre. It's more than shopping now. It's actually a, a place for attractions, a place to uh, relax. Um, People complain about having too many coffee shops in the city, but in fact, you, they're very busy. People would like to sit down and enjoy the whole atmosphere of Chichester. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Jane and, and Tony, for that. Um, as we are approaching the end of the, the session, just a quick closing question to, uh, to, to, to all participants. And, um, and, and Tony, if you, if you don't mind, I, I might ask you this one first, uh, just a very quick one for, for yeah. the work around. What would you like to see introduced to ensure Chichester remains an attractive district for investors? Sorry, who's that, the two? For yourself, it's for all panelists, Tony. I'd like uh, wonder if I could start with you first. <laughs> what would I like to see most? Yes, um, I think one of the things that uh, we do need to get sorted out on the planning side, and with uh, with uh, people like James at Hanbury Property, is is opening up the number of commercial sites that are available for uh, new investors. Um, we we are in the business of developing the local plan review, which will. Uh, should be running now, but we've been delayed for various reasons. Uh, but it's quite difficult to find commercial sites in the city uh, and, and the surrounding area. Uh, we are making the best of what we have. And um, as Jane alluded to, we've done we've got a lot of investment, not only our own in St. James's estate, but also other investors are investing in new warehouse accommodation, which is clearly the, the way to go. But at the moment, uh, we, we've got to be frank, it, it, there, there's less sites than we'd like. But if uh, James and his team at Hanbury can find some more, uh, we'd be only too glad. But uh, the economics are such that uh, uh, landowners tend to hang on to their land on the basis they can get a better value from housing, which we are going to need a lot, uh, rather than uh, commercial. But uh, that is another major area we haven't alluded to, actually, the, um, the, the massive housing programme we have, which is a huge employer on its own, and which... Um, is driving a demand for tradesmen and so on, which uh, Chichester College is doing very well at uh, fulfilling. Thank you, uh, Tony. Uh, Danielle, what would you like to introduce in Chichester remains an attractive district for investors? Well, obviously I'm representing the local businesses that support tourist economy. So our, it's important to us that um, we have maximise footfall and maximise spend. And that for us means overnight stays. So, you know, we're very excited to have 
I work with our local bed and breakfasts uh, and um, boutique accommodation, but we're always looking for more accommodation, accommodation stock. That's incredibly useful for us. Um, and I also think the trends are for greener, sustainable travel. Um, so I also enjoy working with the South Downs National Park uh, and looking at different cycle routes that people can safely take their families and then find adjacent bed and breakfasts that people can go and stay the night and extend their time here. Fantastic. Thank you, Danielle. Uh, Kevin, over to you. Uh, yeah, thanks, Callum. Um, yeah, well, I think a lot of what's uh, what would, would benefit Chichester has already been discussed, but um, you know, ongoing complementary redevelopment in the area would be good, well-designed residential schemes, uh, and coupled with that, um, you know, improve sustainable transportation links. Um, you know, we are well positioned in the south uh, with good transport links, um, but uh, the you know the the extra pressure on that network will. Uh, as a result of the you know the large residential development that's ongoing, uh, we'll put extra pressure on that. So uh, continued improvements to the to the transport network. Fantastic, uh, James. Yeah, I, I mean, from our perspective, I think probably the most fundamental thing is is is, is planning and unlocking future development sites. And I think you know I'd like to see you know, us working more closely with the local planning department you know, both in identifying opportunities and then delivering on those opportunities. That's, that's where I, I really like to sort of see, yeah, see improvements. Not that, you know, they're, they're very supportive of the planning department. I think they're just you know, potentially sort of under-resourced, um, you know, don't have time. But I think you, engagement is the most important thing. And, um, yeah, that's where I'd like to see improvements. Fantastic, James. Thank you very much. Uh, Neil, uh, same question to, to yourself. Yeah, and I think I think it's already been alluded to both by Jane, Danielle, and and actually James and Kevin as well, uh, and and Tony. Um, I think I think when we look at where we are and and who lives in this district, you know, reasons for staying in the district and working in the district is uh, is paramount. So when we look at and, and my, I've just taken over a new role of IT uh, amongst my many other things. So so you know and fast fibre um, available to everyone, both businesses and and homeowners. And again, it's already been mentioned about uh, about sustainable um, transport. So I think the electrical charging infrastructure, which I think um, for most people who have an electric car or hybrid car, have all got smiles on their faces over the last few weeks due to the fuel crisis. Um, my my, I actually drove a hybrid until Thursday evening until someone wrote it off. So uh, I'm I'm back on petrol now, unfortunately. But I, I I see the massive benefit just from a personal level. I travel 25 miles. Um, or 50 miles a day, 25 miles each way. And, and just by having a hybrid car, I saved myself approximately two and a half thousand pounds on a personal basis per year. So I think that infrastructure um, and, and the support of that infrastructure um, and obviously the way electric cars are are now, you know, far outweighing um, uh, petrol cars in terms of percentage increase in, in sales, uh, albeit without some semiconductors. That, Neil, uh, Neil, we'll have to close. Uh, we're running out of time. My apologies. Thank you. Don't worry. I think, I, think it, I think it gets. Thank you very much. Thank anyway, and, and thank you to all the panelists and attendees for joining us on this session as we introduced Chichester to the UK. These are exciting times for Invest Chichester. Chichester District is very much open for business. Uh, please stay up to date by taking a look at www.investchichester, all one word, .co.uk. And you can find us on LinkedIn by searching for Invest Chichester for the very latest news in the district. And if you're looking to locate, grow and thrive, get in touch with our website. That link again is www.investchichester.co.uk. Thank you very much. Thank and you. over to you, Callum, for closing slide. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. And um to our panel as well for uh, for, for great discussion this morning, uh, as well to our session partners in West Chichester for uh, allowing us to introduce the district to today's audience. There is still more to come from Real Estate Live UK today. Uh, at 12 o'clock, we have a part session in partnership with Hammersmith Bid on public and private regeneration and working in partnership to improve the public realm before a lunchtime talk with Kate Orwin, Unibail Redamco Westfield's UK Leasing Director at 1pm. And at 3 p.m. in partnership with Capital West London, we ask what is the role of digital places in driving investment into West London? 
you can book onto these sessions by visiting the program page on our website, which is www.realestatelife.co.uk. Thank you all once again for joining us this morning, and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you and goodbye.